We wanted to look at the antenna placement. Now, I um, reached out to our uh, resident electrical engineer, Clint Patton, and I talked to him about the Wi-Fi antenna. Told him it needs to this device needs to be Wi-Fi capable, and I told him that I probably would want to put the antenna at the top of the design. However, he kind of uh, laughed at me and said, "Well, I'll I'll tell you where it best is placed using CST Studio." for the electromagnetics. Now he used a program called um, Antenna Magus to create the antenna. So he was able to actually find a 2.4 gigahertz antenna that would work really well for this model. And he's able to use Antenna Magus to generate this antenna, create it, and create the solid model of it. Now the cool thing about that is he can actually take that antenna bring it into CST Studio Suite and analyze how this antenna is going to generate the far field and near field um, parameters. So what is this going to look like? And we're going to see that here in a second. Once he gets done setting this up, he's going to start the simulation. And from there, we're going to take a look at the results on the antenna itself. So it's generating those results. And once it finishes running, we can see the result of that. So from there, um, what we had was the near field and far field antenna. So what we really want this to look like, and Clint explained it as almost an apple. We have two really nice lobes being um, presented from this antenna. That gives him a good feeling that this is going to work in the model. Now from there, what we did was we did a, or, or Clint actually did a analysis on the blender itself. So he's setting up the uh, analysis. He's bringing in the blender, the full blender model, and he's generating this um, inside of CST Studio. So he's picking up the blender model, uh, bringing in the assembly, and he's going to pick the parts that are critical for what he is doing. So we can pick this up. It's loading that into CS2, CST Studio Suite, and he's going to add the additional components in that are needed. So he's going to bring in the controller board. He's going to place that in the model. He's going to bring in the antenna as well. And from there, what he's going to do is he's going to add specific materials into the model. Now he pared this down to the specific areas that are going to affect the antenna. Now. The first one that he's showing you here is with the antenna on the back wall vertical. This is what he recommended. And he's going to show me why, through the use of CS2, CST Studio, why my antenna placement was, was bad, right? So he's going to go ahead and set up the simulation. He's going to run that simulation as well. So he's starting the solve right now. He's going to let that solve through, and we'll take a look at the results of this. Now, with respect to the results, he has the ability to do a lot of different uh, plots. So what he's looking for, or what he's going to be showing here, is how that antenna is radiating or uh, releasing um, the Wi-Fi signal into the environment. So we're seeing this in a cut plot type manner. Now we can see how the other uh, materials in the model or in the blender are affecting that and how it is effectively radiating out from that antenna. Now, if we look here, we can also see that from a vertical, and we can see that those two bubbles on the top of the antenna and how those radiate and then come together, that is how it propagates the wave out into the environment. And this is actually showing a very good wave propagation to the beginning, or sorry, to the front, the back, and actually all sides of this blender. So Clint's intuition, uh, he's an incredible electrical engineer, was to put this vertical on the back wall. This is truly what the best placement would be. So we're seeing a very good radiation or radi radiation um, of the Wi-Fi signal out of this out of this position. You can also see how these solids interact with that signal, how that signal wraps around those solids as well in the study. And if we look at the um, far field result, we can see how that's actually radiating 
from the blender itself. Now, Clint said, well, I'll entertain Robert. Uh, he's a mechanical engineer. He doesn't know a whole lot about electronics, which is very true. I'll put the antenna at the top um, of the design and lay it horizontal like um, what I had mentioned to him. And what we're seeing here is why that's a bad idea. So with the antenna laying hor horizontal versus vertical and with it being at the top, we're actually seeing that the signal is only being emitted from the front of the blender, which means if you were trying to connect to this from the back side of the blender, you would have very, very poor signal associated with that. So we're kind of seeing that through the simulation here. So it's all going to the front. That's how it's propagating the signal through the back is very, very poor. And we actually can see that here uh, in, the, in the near field and the far field uh, results. So if we take a look, this is for the um, antenna at the top. You can see the bulk of that near field um, antenna propagation was to the front of that model. Here, this is with the antenna on the back looking at the near field, and it's a nice bubble in and around. Again, the horizontal top antenna is all to the front of the blender, where previously with it vertical, it's rapidly or it's wrapping around the blender itself. So this is a lot better propagation for the antenna signal, and Clint kind of proved that very quickly to me using CS2, CST Studio Suite. We can also see here that the antenna in the vertical position, um, it, it radiates at the 2.4 gigahertz. So you can see the red line is the vertical position. The green is a horizontal position. That is not actually uh, sending the signal at 2.4 gigahertz. It's actually sending it a lot higher just because of the orientation of that signal. We can also see here in the far field, the red, which is the vertical um, antenna, that has a nice um, circular band of, of signal, uniform band of signal leaving it. The green is the antenna in the horizontal position. It's all towards the front of the blender. So Clint was able to prove out where he wanted the antenna, pick the antenna, and we feel good about going forward and saying that this is going to be a Wi-Fi capable component. Um, and you're going to have service no matter where you're at in relation to the blender.